Rebounding and plateaus are the real deal. They're a real physiological thing. It's not something that's just happening in your brain. In this video, we're gonna break down what actually happens with fat cells when it comes down to losing weight and then regaining it. But we're also gonna talk about the metabolism. And then I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks that you can use to make it so that this doesn't become a real issue for you. So if we know the true nature of how a fat cell works, everything kind of comes into clarity. So stick with me through this entire video and you'll get the full gist of it. Hey, you're tuned in to the internet's leading performance and nutrition channel. New videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time, as well as other videos and live broadcasts coming in throughout the course of the week. Also, make sure you head on over to highleat.com so you can check out the premium performance apparel that I'm always decked out in, in my videos. Okay, so there's a couple things we wanna look at. First, there's the resting metabolic rate. That's generally our metabolism. We'll talk about that for a second. And then we're actually gonna talk about how fat cells shrink and enlarge, okay? And how they sometimes multiply, because this will make a lot of sense to you. So let's start with the metabolism side of things. Okay, you have what is called your RMR. You probably have heard of this before. This is your resting metabolic rate or your basal metabolic rate. This is how many calories you burn at rest. And quite frankly, this is probably the biggest driving factor behind how lean you are or how fat you are. It's pretty straightforward. It makes up 75% of our overall metabolism. Someone that has a higher RMR is gonna have a faster metabolism. But the heavier that you are, sometimes your metabolism is automatically higher simply because it has to heat a larger body. So what ends up happening is when you lose weight, your metabolism shrinks a little bit. And it's nothing crazy, it's just the fact that you have less body weight so the body doesn't need as many calories. So unfortunately, what ends up happening there is the calorie becomes more powerful. So what I mean by that is that a calorie to someone that weighs 250 pounds is not as powerful as it is to someone that weighs 150 pounds. That calorie goes a lot further in someone that's 150 pounds because the calorie to weight ratio ends up being higher. So that calorie has the ability to add more weight to that person simply because they're lighter and they require less calories to meet their overall needs. It's easier for them to go into a surplus. Okay, now that's the resting metabolic rate side of things. But then we also have the fat cell side of things. Okay, you may not have known this, but fat cells don't really <clears throat> multiply unless under specific circumstances, which I'll talk about. Fat cells either shrink or they enlarge. And generally speaking, we're set with a number of fat cells from adolescence. And what happens is when we gain weight or we gain fat, they enlarge. Those fat cells that we already have just get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when we lose weight, they shrink, okay? Now what's interesting is that the smaller fat cells tend to signal us to be more hungry. So that's what ends up happening. When we lose weight and our fat cells shrink, they start signaling more specific hormones to make us hungry. They send less leptin and they send more ghrelin. So they tell us to eat more because they wanna grow, okay? So when we start looking at what happens when we lose weight and regain it, things get really interesting. So one thing we have to look at is whether you have lost 100 pounds or you're someone that's just dieted for maybe a, a contest or a bodybuilding show and you've gotten super, super lean, you've probably noticed that it's easier to regain weight. And that's totally, totally true. So that has to do, of course, with the resting metabolic rate, but then we actually look at the fat cell thing too, and this is where it gets really interesting. So when you rebound weight fast, there is evidence that actually shows that you do multiply fat cells. So normally, we thought that you just enlarge those fat cells, and then they'd shrink again if you lost weight, and it was just this simple process, and it was all the metabolism that was causing the issues. But the reality is now, according to the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, that you can actually gain new fat cells when you rebound fast enough. So because the metabolism slows down and because your ability to regain weight is so much easier, your ability to produce new fat cells becomes a lot easier. So when you rebound weight and that fat cell grows really fast, it has the potential to divide. So then what happens is instead of having one large fat cell, you have two smaller fat cells, which therefore gives you more potential to get even more fat because those fat cells will enlarge. So now you have more fat cells that are hungry. Now remember what I talked about with the smaller fat cells signaling more hormones to make you hungry? Let me give you an analogy here that uses like having children as a perfect example. So let's say you have 27 year olds, okay? Those seven year olds are really hungry because they're growing. Those seven year olds are like your fat cells, okay? Okay, now compare that to three 20 year olds, okay? Would you rather feed three larger human beings or would you rather feed 20 hungry little kids? The 20 hungry little children 
are going to demand a lot more food. They're going to be hungry. They're going to be barking at you saying, feed me, feed me, because they're trying to grow. Okay? Whereas the 20-year-olds might be bigger bodies, but they're not going to demand as much food as a 7-year-old. It's the same kind of idea with the smaller fat cells versus the larger fat cells. So now that you've rebounded weight fast and your fat cells are smaller and there's more of them, they're going to be sending signals to make you even more hungry. So then the cycle repeats itself. So then you get even more hungry, you eat even more. Okay, that is where we have the problem. And then when you lose weight again, you're going to rebound again. So the problem here lies again at the very root of our resting metabolic rate once again. Metabolism does matter. Because if we can make it so that when we lose weight the first time, or the second time, or the third time, that our hormones don't change, and that our resting metabolic rate doesn't change, we can solve this problem and stop this cycle. And this is exactly where the ketogenic diet does come into play. Okay, now, I'm an advocate for just about any healthy lifestyle out there, to be completely honest, but the ketogenic diet has some really compelling evidence when it comes down to keeping your resting metabolic rate. So there was a study that was published in the journal Nutrition and Metabolism that took a look at 20 obese patients. They had them go on a very low-carb ketogenic diet for four months, and they on average lost 45 pounds. I've talked about this in other videos, but 45 pounds in four months, that's a pretty rapid weight loss. Well, guess what? They found that if they were on the ketogenic diet, they had no change in their resting metabolic rate. Show me any other diet out there where someone can lose 45 pounds that fast and not have a change in their metabolism. So literally, they lost weight, but their metabolism stayed elevated. So it was like they 250 pounds, went down to roughly 200 pounds, but their metabolism stayed elevated as if they were still 250 pounds, meaning they actually became more fat-burning machines. Okay? Now, this has to do with the fact that ketones are very muscle-sparing. So when they lost weight, they lost fat. They didn't lose bioactive active tissue, like muscle, that actually encourages a faster metabolism. Beta-hydroxybutyrate has been shown in multiple studies to preserve the muscle. So if we can, again, stop the resting metabolic rate from decreasing, we're not going to have to deal with that rebound. If we don't deal with that rebound, then we never deal with growing more fat cells. You see, rebounding is bad. Rebounding is what allows you to have that yo-yo effect that gets worse and worse and worse and worse. And it also makes it harder to get the weight off because you have the hormones working against you, making you hungry all the time. That's why you hit plateaus the second time around, the third time around, more so than you did the first time around. So this isn't all about just doing the keto diet. This is about being very, very aware of your metabolism in the first place. But I will say that becoming fat adapted is definitely, definitely the way to go if you're worried about regaining weight or if you're someone that has struggled with yo-yoing in the past. Make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my videos. Make sure you're commenting down below if you have any ideas for future topics you want me to cover. And as always, thank you for being a subscriber and I'll see you in the next video.